Marines, my name is Patrick Coburn. Today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Patrick Coburn, and today I'll be talking to you, you about the history and structure of the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. Okay, from the beginning of civilization, the war is exemplified and espoused the higher ideals of the martial arts. His strengths of character and mental discipline revived the strength of arms. Never a mercenary or a bully, he's instead been the defender of others. At the moment of our nation's birth, a new warrior emerged to inherit this ancient lineage, the United States Marine. And now for over 235 years, uh, Marines have remained true to the warrior principles and defended, uh, of defending the tenets of uh, freedom and the citizens of our great nation. Uh, today I'll talk to you briefly about the history and structure of the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, and I'll do this with the aid of this uh, PowerPoint presentation that I have before me. Okay, we'll talk briefly about our history, uh, dating back, well, our history dates back well before World War I to uh, 1775, uh, in which a battalion of Continental Marines was established. Uh, their main job was to serve as marksmen aboard, marksmen aboard uh, naval vessels. Uh, uh, and since that time, the Marine Corps has come and gone. And then we're going to fast forward now to World War I. Uh, we had a few small wars in between, but World War I was really the true test of Marine, uh, the Marine Corps with regards to uh, fighting with edge weapons and getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you know anything about history, you know that in World War I, there was a lot of trench warfare. So we refined our trench fighting tactics, and uh, we started to delve a little bit into hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. Now we're going to move forward to World War II, and, uh, and the time in between World War I and World War II, the vast majority of Marines were deployed to uh, China and places in Southeast Asia. While they were there, while they, were there uh, they picked up some of the martial arts, most notably Judo and Karate. Uh, and that's where we start to, to really, really get a grasp on what it was to have some unarmed techniques. And, uh, those techniques were tried and tested throughout uh, the various battles in World War II. Career was much of the same, uh, you know, with the, the country downsized, the military downsized, and our training atrophy. As a result, there really was, wasn't any advancement with regards to our daggone uh, uh, training techniques. Now we're talking a little bit, do we, we fast forward, we're in Vietnam. Vietnam, there was a, a, death, a German war, and there really was not much evolution with the uh, techniques that I, that I before earlier mentioned. Okay, fast forward, 1980s, we had the Millennium Infighting Neural Override Engagement System. It was a line program. The line program was very simple. Basically, it sounds cool, but it was nothing more than they drew a line, a line on the ground and you put your toes on the line and you developed your hitting skills. And whoever fell down first, he was a loser. The difference, uh, one of the major shortcomings of line training was that there were no non-lethal techniques. Every technique was some sort of joint manipulation or break and, or lethal technique. So it really wasn't working for us with the types of and scope submissions that we have. In the uh, early 1990s, we went to the close combat program. They refined the line program and took out some of the techniques that they thought were uh, too vicious or not fitting our program and then we came up with the close combat program. Okay, 19, uh, the CNC vision, July 1999. Then Commandant uh, Jones, he put out the message that he wanted a program that every Marine could learn that would rival uh, a fighting program of any art not throughout the world. And he got 10 subject matter experts together to uh, talk and discuss uh, different types of techniques. And again, they borrowed from Judo, Karate, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, so forth and so on. And we got what we have today. And then uh, about early 1999, uh, as we were 2000, 2001, we had the Martial Arts Test Program, uh, which uh, they had a rifle company of 3rd Tiger 4th Marines out of uh, Camarillo, California. They tested all 179 techniques. The ones that they thought were good, we kept. The ones that we didn't like so well, we got rid of. And then we have what we have today, which is the adoption of our Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, and that was signed off in 2001. Okay, now that I've talked to you about the history, I'm going to go over the belt levels or the structure of the martial arts program. Our martial arts program has a five belt system. We have tan, gray, green, uh, brown, and black. 
Now, if you notice, if you look at my presentation here, you'll see that there are some belts up there with the stripes, or tan stripes and a red stripe. The tan stripe is the signify that that uh, individual ring is an instructor. The red stripe means he's an instructor trainer. <coughs> You can only become an instructor at the green belt or higher level. And then obviously to be an instructor trainer, you would have to be a black belt. Okay, I'm just going to leave you here with this little uh, snippet here. The Marine Corps Martial Arts Program is a synergy of the following disciplines of warrior's training, which are physical, mental, and character disciplines. Mental, Physical, obviously the physical discipline is rifle and bayonet, edge weapons, weapons of opportunity and on-on combat. And then we have a character discipline, which is uh, through our mentoring program, uh, counseling, and so forth and so on. Are there any questions at this time about anything I covered? All right, thank you. All right, close.